Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Alyssa Bennett, and I'm here today to talk about some simple vocabulary changes that can really raise the bar for change. I was diagnosed with a hearing impairment at eight years old. I was told that I would suffer, that I needed to be fixed, and that I would be unable to succeed without speech therapy and auditory therapies. My parents are amazing people. They have been so supportive of me throughout my entire life. All of the obstacles I faced, uh, audiological appointments, speech appointments, surgeries, it's been a great deal of work. I was told that I would need help to succeed in a normal environment. These terms that you see here, impaired, suffering, lost, struggling, and normal, all are negatively framed. So the message you're telling me is that my ears are the only important thing about me. In fact, I'm walking, I'm talking, I go to school, I succeed, I've graduated from college. My ears are simply one of the least important things about me, to be honest. I got a cochlear implant when I was 14 years old, and let me tell you that that was so much more of a struggle, so much more of a, a difficulty than having hearing loss. I am deaf, and so, you know, the happy baby videos on YouTube when they hook up their hearing aids or cochlear implants, it's false, this image. The idea that you can immediately begin to hear, it takes months and months of therapies and consultation to do that. But deaf culture, deaf world was not anything I knew anything about until high school. When I got into high school, I began taking American Sign Language and was introduced to a whole new lexicon. I had an identity suddenly. I was deaf. I, I am deaf. Just as I am white, just as I am a woman, just as I am all of these things, my identity is also that of deaf. And I have a deaf community. I have a deaf culture that I'm part of. I have access because of this. Now, mind you, my cochlear implant does give me access to an auditory world. But now I understand the right to access that I always had to a visual world. I should have always had that. American Sign Language is a beautiful and amazing language. I want to show you what might have been a different approach from doctors, a different kind of script or vocabulary that they could have shared with parents and children so that they could then understand this diagnosis slash identity that they'd encountered. Imagine if they said, your daughter's hearing levels indicate that she is hard of hearing or deaf. This indicates that she will possibly benefit from hearing aids or cochlear implant. However, there is a community of people willing to educate both your daughter and you, her family, on deafness and what this means. I would be glad to put you in contact with a diverse group of people who can help shape your decision-making process from here on out. That script shows a positive framing, a positive outlook on the child's life, a positive future in store for that child and for that family. Instead of framing it as, your child shall suffer and toil and the truth is, everyone suffers, everyone toils in life, that's living. But as a doctor, as educators, we could positively frame this outlook for these people, these children, and their futures. That's just my two cents. And I'm now in a graduate program doing exactly that. I want to educate families so that they, when they are encountering these personal decisions, are not pressured by doctors, by others, and the millions and millions of opinions out there on fixing them, so that they can then incorporate these ideas. And I aspire to help them in this. Thank you very much.